As a healthcare professional, I'm always concerned about the nutritional adequacy for my patients. When I talk about nutritional adequacy, I'm speaking specifically about the components of the foods that we eat. This includes the total number of calories, the amount of protein, carbohydrates, and fats in our diets, as well as the vitamins and minerals. Nutritional adequacy is really the relationship between the intake of nutrients and an individual's nutritional requirements. Nutritional adequacy is very important in IBD, especially given the fact that many individuals with IBD have weight loss and sometimes nutritional deficiencies. Children are in their growing phase of their life, so their requirements in terms of overall nutritional intake are increased as compared to adults. Therefore, it's essential that children with IBD who are on the SCD not only see a physician or a healthcare provider, but also a dietitian to assure that they're getting enough nutrients in their diet. We've captured a ton of dietary logs and have analyzed numerous food logs of daily meals and snacks that kids are eating. And I have found that if a kid is eating a diet that is varied and they're getting all the foods that they can within the scope of the diet. Even without the grains in there, it can be nutritionally complete. The two main nutrients that are deficient are calcium and vitamin D. So oftentimes we will supplement with a vitamin D. Individuals who go on the SCD have the potential of limiting the amount of foods that they take in. This can be actually quite detrimental, especially when we look at micronutrient uh, and caloric intake. It's important when you go on to the SCD to still eat a varied diet. Patients should share their dietary intake with their healthcare provider as well as their dietitian. A nifty trick to determine if you or your child is getting enough nutrients is to have a three-day food log, which you can fill out and have your dietitian analyze for you. Make sure you write down what you ate in addition to how much you ate. See the Nimble website for examples of the forms we use. If you or your child are not taking in enough of a specific nutrient, your dietitian or physician can make recommendations on how to increase your nutrient intake. For example, if your dietitian notes that you are not taking enough vitamins, he or she can recommend a simple multivite to increase your nutrient intake. If we talk about nutritionally dense, meaning calories, the fats on the diet are essential for these kids to meet their calorie needs and to even gain weight. They have to eat quite a bit of food to prevent further weight loss, and they have really high calorie needs. So I find like avocado, nuts, um, coconut milk, any fat we can get in there is very important to their, to their growth. Of course, fruits and vegetables give you all the vitamins and minerals. The nuts and seeds give you a lot of the B vitamins, which are usually fortified in grain products, and since they don't eat grains, they need to get some of those nutrients from the legumes and the nuts, so it's all essential. Again, if a kid is not eating any of those food groups, then we do need to frequently supplement. I feel like that's, I'm a broken record, and that's why it's, they're forced to see me at weeks two, four, eight, and 12 of starting the diet, because it can be so limited. Kids will come in only eating bananas, chicken, and no vegetables. They'll just have like two proteins and maybe a fruit. <laughs> and I say, okay, we need to work on expanding this a little more. And usually we can find at least a few colors or one or two products from each food group that can expand the diet at least a little bit. Limiting the foods that you eat can actually also cause symptoms. If an individual limits the foods that they eat to high fructose containing foods, this can actually cause a lot of GI upset or fructose malabsorption. If individuals limit the amount of fiber that they take in, this can sometimes lead to constipation. So eating a varied diet is essential on the SCD. What's most important to keep in mind with the SCD is making sure that an individual is getting enough food, as well as making sure an individual is getting a varied diet so they're getting enough of the micronutrients and nutrients that they need.